Epi, what the hell happened? The game looked so simple before. The game versus Fortuna, the Evil Rexes versus Midgard. There'd be winners in both wars and everything would resolve itself. There were lots of small points of interest, but they didn't really affect the outcome. Well, I made some predictions in the latter half of last video, specifically that Rose might attack Aurora, and that there would be smaller, like, wars or overlap between these two bigger wars. These two almost global wars. Well, those predictions came true. Mostly true. Uh, where to even start? Yeah, so Rose attacked Aurora, Church of Adam, Borealis, the Hive, and uh, lots of Aurora's smaller allies. Um, Rose was joined in this by Paradise, um, Mayhem, Bourbon Street, uh, a bunch of other alliances from the Game Coalition. Interesting. Notably, Cathago was left out of the Blitz, and so was Camelot. Expanding from that, Camelot is now part of its own independent coalition, um, not by choice, I think, but because Aurora and Cathago have stated Camelot is not a part of their coalition. Interesting. Um, they're both fighting Midgard, though, so w whatever. Confusing, but fine. Um, so yeah, Rose and all of them attacked. Then the fighting pacifists declared war on Midgard, including Legion of Dawn, which the Evil Exes and Camelot had both left out of their attacks. The Knights Templar attacked Legion of Dawn for not honoring their treaty with uh, their allies in Midgard. And Lost Empire declared war on Aurora after Rose declared on them. Interesting. They're technically a separate organization, but they're falling under the Midgard umbrella, I think, because there's a lot of uh, historical ties between those groups. The Lost Empire used to be part of their sphere. Um, and then there's a bunch of smaller conflicts which started appearing to my great sadness. Um, yeah, Afterlife versus Paradise and so forth. I think we'll just go around the web and sort of explain who everyone's fighting, because the timeline, as fun as it is, isn't that helpful. So all of Midgard is fighting the evil exes, and they're losing. They're most likely going to lose the war, um, despite Aurora, Church of Adam, and Borealis being zeroed by other enemies, Cathago is still keeping them down. Midgard is also fighting Camelot, uh, they're not doing so hot against them either. TLE is fighting Aurora because I guess Aurora was weak and TLE has some dispute with them, um, or they wanted to come to Midgard's defense. I can actually check um, whilst I'm here. It'll be from Atlan or the NATO guy. Space Atlanteans. Here it is. I have it open already. Okay. So once in a far corner of the universe lived two great empires, Aurora and Atlantis. Thousands of years. To never forget their courage and strength, they continue in peace and harmony. The lost empire declares war on Aurora. And he used the AI storytelling app. Uh, so there is nothing of substance here. Fantastic. Um, Legion of Dawn versus KT. That's a fun one. So, where the honor thy treaty. I do believe that all we have is our word, that when we say things, we should mean them and mean them wholeheartedly. I have no clue who that is. Um, so when Aurora and their coalition attacked Midgard, then Legion of Dawn did not join. Legion of Dawn stayed out, um, and there were accusations that Legion of Dawn had been, uh, captured 
by uh, spies working for Aurora and other people just kind of called them cowards. Whatever the truth is, they stayed out until the Knights Templar, um, which is a member of the Game Coalition, uh, rode in and attacked Legion of Dawn and said, if you're not going to honor your treaty, uh, then we're going to roll you for that and teach you to be an honorable alliance, um, which is a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, except Right Honorable. They're attacking everyone in Legion of Dawn except Right Honorable, which has a brilliant name for this conflict, because Right Honorable wanted to join the war, and he was uh, overridden by his uh, high government, overruled. Um, aside from that, you also have TLE versus Camelot, which I will pull up. Spoilers. Spacey. I'm missing it. Dragons and schooners. Uh, so this is also sort of nonsense. Um, but Teely recognizes hostilities with Camelot and its allies and awaits its official declaration of war, or CB, for its embarrassing assault upon our fleet. So what uh, Teely is saying there is that Camelot hasn't provided a reason, which is a theme of all of Camelot's declarations, from their attack on MPO to the attack on Midgard, um, there's been no public statements whatsoever, and that's true of this conflict as well. So I don't hold up much hope that TLE will get its answer. Um, next we'll have, uh, we'll rotate around, I guess we'll use, uh, Camelot because that's a simple one. They're fighting all of Midgard except for Legion of Dawn, which it isn't totally clear why. Um, they're fighting all of, uh, New Polar Order, and... It's the remnants of its coalition. That's a much older war going back to like January. Um, and they're fighting TLE. Uh, the Evil Xs. So they're fighting all of Midgard except Legion of Dawn, which kind of adds to the spy narrative. If they weren't attacking Legion of Dawn because it was a military threat, then like KT and others have erased that military threat. Right, Legion of Dawn isn't going to put up a fight, so there's no reason for Aurora to leave them out unless they had some sort of influence or they had some sort of spy, or if there was a secret backroom deal where they said we're not going to fight each other. Um, or even like remnants of like loyalty saying, well, they didn't attack us, maybe we won't attack them in exchange. Um, you have Aurora, COA, and the Hive versus the game. This is a fun one. So, in my last video, I actually said that Rose's declaration of war on uh, Eclipse may in fact be foreshadowing a war on Aurora, because when they attacked Eclipse, they stated, uh, or they used the word Aurora a lot, the absolute state of Eclipse. Here. Yeah. See, so the in this, they state they're going to war with Eclipse. However, they use Aurora a lot. I'll pull it up. They use them twice. The most egregious deployed the eagerly subservient vassal Aurora to sow discord and discontent, and Eclipse's most deferential dependent Aurora. And then in their declaration on Aurora, um, they use the word Eclipse a lot. So they just switched the uh, declarations of war um, for the fun of it. Where is this? Why is the naming so bad? Um, Repain fired to... This might be it. No, it's not. That's Strickland Propane. Oh, here it is. The Absolute State of Aurora. Um, okay, no, no, I got it confused. Okay, so this is it. So the absolute state of Aurora was the declaration of war on Eclipse, and the absolute state of Eclipse is their declaration of war on Aurora. They completely flipped them. Um, it's not terribly clear why. I think it's, I think it's mostly foreshadowing, though.
they were going to hit both, so they just uh, they flipped them to give them some some notice. Then they knew that Aurora couldn't do anything about the impending hit. Um, so yeah, they were just mentally messing with them. Oh, here we go. Back to the map. Um, yeah, so they're fighting the game. Cathago is not. So Cathago is an ally of the fighting pacifists. They have an MDOAP treaty. Rose, the rest of the other members of the game, they cannot attack Cathago without forcing the fighting, the fighting pacifists to defend them and creating a civil war within their coalition. So this allows Cathago to continue their war against Midgard, though at least initially this still looked bad because Cathago and Camelot alone might not have had the military power to keep all of Midgard suppressed. Um, and Midgard could have very, uh, very likely won that war. Aside from that, then you have Aurora versus the Coven. Aurora has been its fighting uh, TFB ally for almost a month now. It's It's been a while, um, but it predates all of these wars. It predates the global as well. Um, now the game and Fortuna. We'll switch over to that. So the game has continued their war against Fortuna. I think they've secured... Uh, the military advantage now, the net has flipped in their fli in their favor as well. So um, when the war started, Rose had lost five billion. Um, they, I think they dealt like ten or twenty billion, um, but they'd lost like fifteen or twenty five or something. So there was there was a bit of a a net loss. Now that's completely shifted. I think Rose is up ten or twenty billion. I can check actually. So that way I'm not guessing. Do, 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 do. Here you go, get more stats. Cathago has the best names for these wars. Yeah, they're up 28 billion, which is insane. Um, and that, to me, that speaks more about how rich Eclipse was, not how successful Rose has been. Um, but yeah, initially they were down 5, now they're up 28. You have the game versus uh, Aurora, though actually I should note, all of the game except uh, the fighting pacifists. I don't think they're involved, um, and there might be a few others which are not involved as well. But broadly, most of the game is involved against Aurora. And this is the big one. I mentioned Katie and LOD before. TFP attacked... Midgard in a move that completely shocked all their allies and I'm gonna find it because it's brilliant so my fellow peacekeepers it appears that we have a new assignment a backwards confederacy of states calling themselves Midgard has instigated a civil war amongst itself a most interesting strategy indeed in the midst of this violent unrest those who have caused the violence could think of just one solution to save their pixels vacation and only then once after florida did these cowards finally acknowledge their state of war with aurora and its coalition as pacifists we hate to see more conflict this coalition of states is in shambles again and these frightened tyrants deserve no resort vacation with our brothers in carthage it is our duty to restore the peace the fighting pacifists declares a special key peacekeeping operation into Midgard. And credit to whoever wrote that, they buried a lot of uh, meaning into it. So the first part of it is really interesting because a back quote source Midgard has instigated a civil war. So that and first line puts all of the blame on Midgard. So they're supporting Aurora's justification for war. Um, in the midst of this violent unrest, the, to save the Pixels' vacation, only then once after Florida, what they're saying there is that Midgard didn't recognize hostilities um, with Aurora, which I can find... should be able to find here. Oh, wait... 
Sheep AI, Mindsim, here it is, Ticket to Paradise. Aurora has always dreamed of going to Florida. So this is saying that Midgard didn't acknowledge they were at war with Aurora until Rose, Paradise, and the members of the Game Coalition attacked Aurora and beat Aurora militarily. Um, so it's almost stating that Midgard is cowardly, that they're calling other people to fight their battles um, instead of doing it themselves, and that they would not have uh, recognized hostilities, perhaps, um, unless they knew they were going to win. As pacifists, we had to see more conflict. These titan, these tyrants deserve no resort vacation. Um, they do not deserve to be helped by the game's coalition. And with our brothers in Carthage, it is our duty to restore the peace. And what they're stating there is that because TFP has an MDOAP treaty with Carthage, specifically the OAP part gives TFP the right to join Carthago's offensive wars, mutual defense and optional aggression pact. Um, so TFP is actually using a very legal argument to justify their participation in this war, which contrasts with Florida and Rose, because when Rose attacked Aurora, they did not cite a legal argument. They didn't say, well, there was already a state of war with one of our allies, because there's no formal treaty between Rose and uh, Midgard or any of the allies in Midgard. Um, rather, Rose used... I think this is the one. No, it's not. Uh, Jesus. This is actually really confusing. Um, I think they use precedent. Second conspiracy with most beloved people, feeding them false fears, setting them against other states, truly a devilish plot. Plus differential. Okay. Well, in public at least, then it might be somewhere buried in here, they've effectively said that the reason they're going to fight against um, Aurora is that Aurora gave its 72-hour notice, even if there wasn't really a treaty, um, and that Aurora was bound to honor this, that there's precedent for giving allies that time, um, there's precedent for not starting civil wars. So it's not as much of a legal argument as TFP. It's sort of saying that this is, this is just a bad idea. So we're going to discourage other people from doing this by, by rolling Aurora for it. Um, huge contrast. Uh, TFP's move was also met by a lot of criticism um, from their coalition. Uh, confusion. Uh, they don't know what's going on. And so forth. Yeah, <laughs> more confusion. A lot of people, I think, are uh, surprised by this, and they don't fully understand it, though the the, the declaration of war is pretty clear in my view. Um, there have been people that are calling it a proxy war between uh, Rose and TFP. I disagree. It's not a proxy war. The There's no, like real tension between Rose and TFP, aside from the tension that's obviously been generated by this declaration of war. Um, TFP isn't a peer competitor with Rose, it's a fair bit weaker. Um, the I think this is indicative of something else. I think there's a general theme amongst all these wars, Camelot, TFP, Rose, Bourbon, and Mayhem, etc. A KT included, um, where these outside parties are in some way preying upon the Aurora and Midgard war. Because that war has made both parties much, much weaker, um, Knights Templar can hit Legion of Dawn without consequence. Rose can hit Aurora without consequence. Camelot can hit Midgard without consequence. Um, TLE almost hit Aurora without consequence. Um... So, 
I, it's almost a sign that the game is just so powerful at this point that it's imposed its will on every, that it can impose its will on everyone else. Um, that it's almost imperialistic. Um, just until the war ends and when, then Fortuna and the Uxes and Midgard, et cetera, they will rebuild their military power and they'll be able to prevent this sort of intervention. Um, but until that happens, then the game can do whatever it wants, um, which is not a great sign. Uh, that's, that's probably a bad thing. Um, but we will continue. Uh, Fortuna. So all of Fortuna is fighting the game. That hasn't changed. Afterlife versus Paradise is new. I will pull that up. Here it is. This has automatically been generated by AI. Um, the post has not, though. So Paradise attacked the Afterlife. It is the Afterlife. Paradise attacked Afterlife, which is a protectorate of Eclipse. Afterlife merged into Paradise and then unmerged from Paradise or demerged because it uh, believed the alliance was boring or not uh, welcoming or something else. Um, they then ruined uh, Paradise's attempts to merge Dark Brotherhood. They accept that. Um, they tried to poach members of Paradise. They called uh, Paradise's, I think, head of FA, or at least, very least, former leader, a shady dude, um, and so forth. So this is a really weird ROH, because it's sort of saying, we did a lot of the things that you're mad at us for. <laughs> they just kind of admit it. Um, I don't see anything in here that actually purports to defend themselves against the claims uh, from Paradise at all. Uh, but it, it is kind of funny, and perhaps these claims are not super strong. Maybe, I, I don't know, I guess they're sort of attacking norms, the same, well, poaching doesn't really matter. And we should be able to say, um, your lead is shady, and that, that shouldn't cause a war. Um, and we should be able to tell other alliances not to merge into you, and that shouldn't be uh, an issue either. Um, and the alliances should have a right to self-determination. Um, which You can view it that way, in which case they have a stronger argument. Um, either way, uh, Afterlife recognized hostilities with only Paradise, I believe. Um, paradise comes for them, blah, blah, blah. blah. Here it is. I'm going to find this. We ROH only Paradise and the Soul Nations, the counter iron game version of... Okay, they're calling themselves Ukraine. Interesting. Um, very interesting. Justice for Khan. Aurora did nothing wrong. Uh, so they're expressing support for Aurora and the ex-wives in their war. Very interesting. Uh, I'm going to run through these other forum posts, um, see if I missed anything. Oh yes, so Bourbon Street and Mayhem uh, declaring war on uh, Aurora and the others. Yeah, so this, actually this might have been what I was looking for earlier. It's to eliminate and reprimand a dangerous action before it becomes a precedent. Um, so that's the same justification Rose has and that they've stated elsewhere, but it is explicitly stated um, by members of the Game Coalition in this declaration of war by uh, Mayhem and Bourbon Street. Um, they declare neutrality in the KT and Legion of Dawn conflict. Um, Cataclysm is also participating. That does make me wonder if TKR is participating. I I don't know. I, I don't think it matters at this point, um, given so much of their coalition is. Yeah, there's some interesting arguments. Um, the absolute state of Florida. 
Uh, I mentioned that before. Check it. That absolute chaos. This, I, I was not going to mention this, but someone forwarded it to me because it was so ridiculous. Um, I'm not going to go through it. I am more in awe at the fact that you have just posted a several minute long North Korean propaganda video lavishing praise upon yourself in place of a North Korean dictator. <laughs> he made... Okay, I will play a little bit of it because it's it's funny. Not the, the rest of the video, but just the, what he did. Where is this? Yeah, so he made a video where he portrayed or he compared himself with Kim Jong-il. <laughs> Voluntarily. <laughs> he looked at all the world leaders at everything online and he was like, I'm gonna portray myself as this character or as this person. I'm gonna compare us. Um, because I think that's what will make the game sympathetic, um, to me, or will persuade them that, that I am right in this war. What brilliance. Because this is a peace agreement, I'm almost tempted to think this was like a peace term, but I don't think Aurora would possibly be that creative. Um, no. <laughs> Uh, oh wait, I could uh oh. CTN .net. I could actually look at the war stats in both conflicts. Um with with a little more detail. So this is the big uh the game versus Fortuna War. Rose is doing very, very well. Uh, more interesting though is actually the damages. Eclipse has taken a beating, the syndicate has two, the uh, equal and damage received which is very unusual, um, but the Syndicate is not performing so well um, in damage inflicted. Terminus S is also taking things quite badly. The Knight's Radiant took a lot of damage. Um, he has significantly more damage than most of their coalition. Oh, and I'm ignoring Rose. Damn, 66. Rose has been doing the heavy fighting in this, the heavy lifting, it seems. Um, that said, Rose, I think in peacetime makes 3 billion a day, which, yeah, that's less than a month's income. Like, they're fine. Um, do, 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 do. this is the Aurora, the ex-wives versus Midgard war. Um, Cosago is pulling way ahead. Um, Aurora is still doing very well, strangely enough. Ah, okay, so this is not including Rose and the rest. I'm certain that if you included Florida in this, then Aurora is net negative now. Absolutely. And as is much of this coalition. Um, Camelot also doesn't appear, but I'd say they're actually probably 10 bill positive, or at least 5 bill positive at this point. There are... Or a few other words. I'll mention this, the Coven's last bonsai. Borealis, Aurora. The Coven has not done that well, to be honest. This is a very small number of wars. Um, 191 for a conflict that's been lasting, like, months? No, that's... or a month at least. No, that's pitiful. That's actually trash. Um... Well, not quite a month. Almost a month. That's still really bad. Um, but they're almost net neutral, so that's fine. Um, Aurora, it didn't do as well as it hoped. One interesting outcome of this war could be that if Aurora loses to the game, the Coven might be able to get in on the peace agreement and actually win their war against Aurora. I think that would that's more dependent on the Coven's uh, diplomatic skill than anything else. Um, if they're not doing it, perhaps they should. Um, 
because there is no way they're going to win it conventionally. And after Aurora gets back up um, after this war, then uh, they'll defeat the Coven again, um, or continue defeating them. Um, the MPO vs. Camelot War is also still going, uh, but it's not being tracked anymore. Actually, I'll make a, a video on that that's totally separate uh, at some point, because it's a very interesting war. Um, and I believe that is everything. Uh, do I have any new predictions? Um, let's see. I, I want to keep up the winning streak. Um, oh, and actually, just to explain the map, TFP, the reason I've colored it sort of differently is because it's somewhat in the Evil Xs and it's somewhat in the game because it's participating in both wars uh, offensively. Um, I, it should have membership in both coalition leadership chats, I presume. Yeah, should be. Um, yeah, anyway, anyway, so predictions. Midgard probably loses. I think TFP, Carthago, and the rest will manage to beat Midgard and make Midgard surrender to them and to Aurora. So Aurora will win that war. The game, excluding TFP, will beat Aurora and make it surrender to the game. Uh, but perhaps not Midgard. The game should beat Fortuna. There shouldn't be any more like big changes happening there. Um, KT probably pieces out with Legion of Dawn and switches on to some new targets as they're hungry for stats. Um, Camelot probably... I don't even know what they're going to do. I was going to say they defeat Lost Empire, but... They haven't made any like announcements. I don't even know what they're doing, so... Maybe they beat Lost Empire, in which case then maybe they also beat Midgard. Midgard could also just drag that war out um, because it's separate and try and impose terms on Camelot. I've heard some rumors of stuff like that, which would make that war very complicated. Um, what else is there? That seems really unusual. Oh, Requiem. This is correcting a note from uh, The Last War. So Requiem was not the supposed organizer of the whole coalition. I spoke to a member of Paradise and they said that Requiem was actually one of the last alliances to be told. Um, apparently they had so many former members of the syndicate that like, they couldn't really be as trusted. Um, so they were told last. Um, which also means that TFP wasn't told last, which I presumed in my last video. Um, oh, USN. I almost forgot about USN. This is actually one of the funniest things I've seen uh, in the game, period. It's right up there. And it's made funnier by uh, a member of the game coalition trying to hype USN up. Um, I'm going to find this. It's done by Matrix, which is actually a pretty chill dude. Um, but, yeah, he, he had a pretty unfortunate, um, declaration of war. Here it is. Okay. So, due to the recent actions taken by Aurora and their current conflict with the alliances of Midgard, the United Socialist Nations feels obligated to assist Midgard in their conflict. We will not stand by while our allies can be provided help. To that end, we have signed an MDP with United Purple Nations and will come to the defense of Midgard. May it good, be a good fight. Um, so, USN was a protectorate of UPN, and they saw their whole block being attacked and they said, this is wrong, we'll upgrade the treaty and then we'll jump to their defense. In contrast to uh, Legion of Dawn, which refused to honor its MDPs. And for that reason... Uh, UPN initially congratulated them right after the post was made. Um, Overall, I condemned them by saying that you have no like legal or legalistic 
right to enter the war because the treaty didn't exist when a war started. Um, and then you have, yeah, Eclipse, which is from the Flor uh, Fortuna Coalition, saying um, you haven't declared that many wars. And here, this is such a great post for something I'll point out in a second. So, uh, USN is no longer allied with Midgard. It signs a treaty with Midgard. It recognizes hostilities in a war it likely loses. It refuses to elaborate. Legion of Dawn. Even though Midgard are our allies, Aurora are our friends too, so we shouldn't enter this war and hug our pixels so that Aurora wins. So this is portraying USN as this uh, titan among men, or, or dojas, um, and being very based and very competent. There's only one tiny problem, just one small problem, and I'm going to point it out in a second. You may have noticed that this declaration happened at... 10 a.m., right? Or at 10 p.m. time zones. It happened two hours before day change. Before day change. He posted a declaration of war. He didn't launch any attacks. And then he got slaughtered at day change by Camelot and Carthago. How amazing is that? And just so there's no illusion, that, well, maybe he, like, he, he, for whatever reason, he couldn't fight, but the rest of his alliance could. Let's have a look at the original declarations of war. Like, two or three people declared war. That was all. And then they proceeded to get completely slaughtered, mostly by Camelot, but also by Carthago. He, he literally, he posted his declaration of war before he declared war. Which, it's not like he's the first one to do this. Lots of small alliances do it and make this mistake. But USN has existed since, like, 2016. A long time. They should not have made this mistake. And, I mean, the propaganda is really, like, doing some heavy lifting to portray them as this competent alliance um i'm sorry matrix i'm sorry Ascen, but yeah this was not a good look you did something honorable genuinely like jumping into the fire when you didn't have to now strickland propane also declared war this to me doesn't isn't that interesting strickland propane has been around for years um they're very old um, da, da, da. Latim is countering a pirate. Not too significant. The propaganda thread was really fun. Uh, I'll pull it up. It immediately devolved into nonsense. Here it is. Um, this might be the new one. Yeah, okay, so this is a new propaganda thread. There was an older one. <laughs> Didn't do so hot. Because TKR and their friends immediately derailed it. <laughs> well, some other people also helped derail it. Absolutely fantastic. The largest propaganda thread we've had in ages was like the Camelot versus NPO war. I think all the other propaganda threads have been basically empty, which is kind of sad. Um, I'd say that's everything. Um, this will be a very interesting war. There's bound to be new developments. Uh, I don't really have any predictions, none that are really big and significant, um, because I think the biggest events that could have happened in this war have, precluding Grumpy entering and Guardian entering somehow, and, like, maybe the game falls into a civil war or something, I don't know. If something like that happens, there's no universe that anyone could have predicted it. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Hopefully this video was informative, or uh, very interesting at least.